my new kitchen. I'm all set up in my new place, so I hope you like it. I will be doing a little tour of it, so keep posted. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite cakes. It's a Fraser cake. Fraser means strawberry. It's probably pronounced more like Fraser or something, um, but I can't do the accent. So it's a strawberry cake. Um, you may not have seen them before, but you've got two sponges and there's a cross section of strawberries around the outside. It's one of my favorite cakes to make. It looks really impressive and it's not actually that hard to do. We're going to make a Genoise sponge. You may have heard that sponge before and people say Genoese because that's how it's spelt. It's actually Genoise. Um, and it's a very different technique to my normal sponge cake. You can use my normal sponge cake recipe because at the end of the day, like I said, it's two sponge cakes sandwiched with creme patisserie. But because creme patisserie can be quite heavy, it's nicer to have a lighter sponge. So to do this, you have to whisk up eggs and sugar and then fold in flour. So it doesn't have as much fat in. This is the amount of butter we're using. It's only about 18 grams. So you could say it was a fatless sponge, but you're filling it with creme patisserie, so it's not exactly fat free, is it? Uh, but it is a different technique. So we're going to start by getting the mixer bowl, and I've got my whisk attachment, and going in straight away with the eggs and egg yolk. So I've written the quantities of the recipe below. Um, it's got an extra egg yolk in. To be honest, I think it's just to make it that bit richer because you have a limited amount of fat going in, the egg yolk may give it that extra richness. And in goes the caster sugar. And then we're going to whisk this until ribbon stage. And I will show you what that means when it gets to it. about four or five minutes and this is what I meant by ribbon stage. You can pick up the mix and draw a pattern and you can see it when it falls back onto the mix and almost stays for a bit before it sinks back in. So that's what ribbon stage is. Um, it's quite fascinating how that is just egg and sugar but this is how you get the air and the rise in this sort of cake. So we're not actually using self-raising flour here, it's plain flour, um, and like I said, the air comes from the whisking of the eggs and sugar. So I don't usually sieve my flour, but it's a very light and delicate sponge, and I don't want any lumps of flour, so I'm going to sift it in, but not all at once, because what you also don't want is for the egg and sugar to collapse. So you have to do it really lightly, and I'm gonna do about a third at a time, and very gently fold it through. Because you don't want to knock out any of that air you've just created. Once that's folded, I'm going with the next. Because flour, I suppose, is quite heavy, so if you literally just dump it all in one, um, you can collapse the air in the eggs and sugar. So when I fold, I go through the middle and round, and then the outside and round. Fold in the middle, and then the outside. And just the last bit. Oops, I may have missed the bowl a bit. Never mind. And once you see the flowers folded in, then you can go in with your melted butter. And you're probably thinking that because of the lack of butter, it could be quite a dry cake. So what we're gonna do is soak it um, in a syrup, like I do with my normal cakes, but even more so for this one. This is a very classic French sponge. So that looks lovely and light, and all the butter and flour is mixed in, but I haven't collapsed the batter. So I've got a cake ring on some baking paper on a tray. I'm not going to grease it. So you can do it with a cake tin. Um, it's just going to be a bit more fiddly for the uh, 
building part of the Fraser cake. So this is a mousse ring. I've put all the equipment below in the comments as usual. You don't need to grease it. Uh, we're going to put it in directly like this. What I also have seen people use are these rings where you can change the size of it. I don't even know how you want to do it, but um, it's an adjustable ring basically, which kind of helps if you're doing larger cakes. Um, I think, you know, I've had this for such a long time, I don't even think it's opening anymore. Anyway, there are these kind of bits of metal here that interfere with the sponge. So they're good for building up cakes, but not so much for cooking them in. Um, so if you can, get yourself just a solid mousse ring. And I believe this is a 15 centimeter ring. So I'm going to just pour in the cake batter directly into the tin. And that is how you do the Genoa sponge, and that is going in at 180 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. I'm going to check it after 20 minutes, um, but it should be really light and spongy, and it will bounce back as you touch the top. So I'm going to go and put it in the oven and set my timer. Okay, so the Genoa sponge is nice and cooked. I also do a knife test just to make sure that it's cooked on the inside because it is still a very soft sponge, which um, for usual sponges, if you just touch it, it may feel a little undercooked, but it is really airy and light. So I just like to double check by putting a knife inside and making sure it comes out clean. Now I've let it cool just so it's not too hot to handle. Um, but what I'm going to do is lift up the baking paper and peel the bottom off. And then it is still hot, so I'm just gonna be careful, but I'm now going to cut the cake out of the tin. So I'm going to put a knife very close to the edge of the tin and then go round. And all I'm doing is releasing it from the tin itself. And there you have the sponge. It's a very crummy sponge. So you can already see crumbs are coming off already, but that is how you get a really nice edge to it. So if you had lined the tin with baking paper, um, it actually crimples a bit. So to get a nice, um, edge to the cake, it's better to just bake it directly onto the tin. So I'm going to leave that to cool completely to the side. And we're going to want the tin for building up the cake. So I'm going to rinse and wash this out. Just make sure that you're using the same tin to build the cake up because it's the same size basically. So I'm leaving the cake to cool. I've also made some creme patisserie. Now I have a video all about creme patisserie, so head up to this corner here, um, and you can always pause this video, go and watch that one, and then come back to it. But I've cooked some creme patisserie, and it's on a tray cooling, which I'm going to whisk up in a bit. Um, but while I'm waiting for everything to cool down, I'm going to prepare the strawberries. Now you're probably thinking, like, what do you mean prepare the strawberries? Surely you just cut them. There is a technique. You obviously want it to be as even as possible. So, firstly, choosing your strawberries. Um, make sure you get nice strawberries because <laughs> they're, they're the first things that you're gonna see when you see the cake. So I've got some lovely strawberries here. And um, some of them are a little misshapen. Um, so I'm going to try and pick out the kind of classic shape um, from this bunch. Don't worry about them being all exactly the same size because we are going to trim them, but the shape matters the most. Okay, so obviously I'm doing a 15 inch cake, which is quite small, so I'm not gonna need so many strawberries, but obviously if you're doing larger tiers or multiplying the recipe, then you need more strawberries. So, there's a nice collection. I'm just going to put them onto the side and I'm going to pre prepare the first one. So I'm going to chop off the top, 
stand it upright and then cut it in half. So we get a really nice cross section of the strawberry. And now I'm going to use the chopping board and line the strawberries up like this. And this is how you can see that all the strawberries are the same height. So I'll do the next strawberry. Line them up and I can already see that the second strawberry is slightly shorter than the first one. So when I finish all of them, I might trim the first ones. So I'm just going to repeat it until I have lots of strawberry halves. So I've got more than enough strawberry halves. Again, my cake is only small, but it's always good to have extra. And I can see that they are different lengths. So I'm going to trim them so they're all the same length. And just cut off the larger strawberries. And now they're all the same length. Perfect, I'm just gonna do that with the second row. So now they are all identical, which means when we decorate the cake, the cake is gonna be so even and amazing. Um, don't throw out any spare bits of strawberries because I'm going to put some strawberry bits in the middle of the cake. In fact, I'm going to cut up a spare strawberry as well and just add to that collection. So just chop them into random size pieces. You won't see this, so the sizes don't have to be exactly the same. I'm just roughly chopping. So the strawberries are prepared. I've got them all nice and even and some spare chopped strawberries for the inside of the cake. Now I can cut the cake because it is nice and cool. So first thing is that I'm going to cut off the top so it's nice and flat. My usual technique of cutting, no cake wire needed. Insert the knife and gently rotate the cake. And you can already see how soft and light this sponge is. Um, it even like makes an airy noise. I don't, I can't really describe it any other way. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's, it literally sounds like a sponge. Um, I'm not going to throw this away because we're going to use this for the inside of the cake. I'm just going to leave it there and now cut this in half. Just rotating the cake as I cut through. Hopefully, that is nice and even. So I've got two even sides. What I am just thinking though, is when I see Fraser cakes, it looks really delicate. And I actually think this sponge is slightly too thick. So I'm actually going to make this sponge a little thinner just by trimming off about a centimeter, half a centimeter, um, just, to make this the, just to make the sponge a little bit thinner. I also think that my strawberries are quite small, so you don't want tiny strawberries and then a really thick sponge because the balance will be off. That's better. So what I do, I literally just brush away the excess crumbs because again, it's very crummy. I'll take all of these away. And now I'm going to soak them with my sugar syrup, which is equal measures of sugar and water with a little bit of vanilla. A nice trick, if you're interested, is to put some uh, liqueur inside. So I think kish or something like cherry or um, strawberry, um, some liqueur to flavor the syrup is a really nice kick um, to the cake. But there are gonna be kids, so I think it's best to keep it alcohol free for now. Just going to soak the sponge. And this sponge, because it's so dry, really absorbs the liquid. So you do actually get the flavor and moisture of the sponge through the sugar syrup. I'm also going to soak the little excess bit that I saved. So, strawberries prepped, sponge prepped, 
Now we're going to prep the filling. It's the creme patisserie, which is completely cooled and it's gone to that really funny texture. So I'm just going to remove the cling film and now I'm going to knock it back like I would do any creme patisserie. But the only difference with this and the one that I made on my other video is that we're actually going to turn this into creme mousseline. So I actually can't remember if I mentioned it on my other video of creme patisserie, but you can turn this into um, different kinds of cream. So we're gonna add butter, which basically stabilizes it more, and therefore we can build up the Fraser cake with it. You can also add whipped cream, which turns it into creme diplomat, and you can also add um, Italian meringue, which makes it creme shibus, I think. So you can do all sorts of things with creme patisserie, but we are making a mousseline. Before we add the butter though, we knock it back. So I've got the whisk attachment and on it goes, and I'm going to whisk it up until there are no lumps left. So the creme patisserie is really, really nice and smooth. Um, so it's this stage which I would usually fill fruit tarts with or shoe buns, but like I said, we're going to be adding butter. So I'm going to keep it whisking and add softened butter in stages until it all comes together and it almost looks like a buttercream and it is absolutely divine. I don't usually like creme patisserie, but with the addition of butter, like, how can you not like it? <laughs> I'm going to fill up a piping bag and then we are almost ready to fill the freezer cake. Like I said, what the butter does, it gives it structure and the freezer cake then goes into the fridge and the butter in the creme patisserie will harden and stop the cake from completely collapsing. Right, I've got everything I need to build up the freezer cake, including the clean cake ring that we baked the cake in. That's very important. So, first things first, we need to check the side of the cake has the nice and flat one because that is going to be the top of the cake. So, you want the other layer. And just to secure it to the cake board, I'm going to squeeze a little bit of creme patisserie on the top. I'm using a cake board because I'm taking it, but you can do this on a plate um, if you like. So I'm just going to place the first layer on the top. I'm going to press it down just so it's stuck to the creme patisserie. And now I'm going to place the cake ring over the top. And it should fit in exact because this is the ring that we made the cake in. So just make sure that it's all nicely lined up. And now is the fun part. We get our strawberry halves and I'm going to place them around the outside of the cake against the ring. Now you want the flat side of the strawberry against the cake ring. So you're kind of doing it backwards. I'm going to place it like this, right up against the edge, and then place the next one right next to it. And I'm going to go around the whole cake tin until the whole ring is full of the strawberries. So I may not use all of these, but we can see how it goes. And then the last one. Oh, fits perfectly, it's so snug. Oh, that has like never happened. Usually I have to trim the strawberry on its side very slightly, but luckily these strawberries are the exact width they should be. So now I'm going to pipe some creme patisserie in between the strawberries because I want to make sure that the sides are really full of creme patisserie. So rather than just filling it up, I'm going to concentrate on the sides first. So I'm going to squeeze some creme patisserie up the side in between each strawberry. Refilling really in the gaps. 
because this is what you're going to see from the outside. Make sure that those gaps are even more filled than they already are. I'm going to use a small step palette knife and almost press that creme patisserie against the cake tin. So I'm really filling those holes where the strawberries meet. There should be no gaps whatsoever. So once you've done that, I'm going to pipe a ring of creme patisserie just on the bottom. And this can be more rough now because you're not going to see this. And then I'm going to get that extra piece of cake I saved earlier and put it in the middle. Now not only does that give the cake a little bit more structure, but when you cut into the cake, you're gonna have this layer in the middle of cake and strawberries, which I'm going to add now, which is a nice surprise. And again, adds more flavor. Also, if you're only getting a piece of the middle of the cake rather than the outside, you're guaranteed a strawberry. So I'm just going to spread the chunks of strawberry that I cut up earlier. And now I'm going to just fill the whole top with the creme patisserie. So I'm going to go around the outside just to fill in those gaps. And then onto the top of the strawberries. I'm going to fill it slightly more than I should because then we're going to scrape it clean. I'm going to get a larger palette knife to do this, and this is probably one of my favorite things to do in baking and patisserie. Um, it's just so satisfying. I'm just going to scrape away, so just make sure it's evenly spread before I do so. May have overfilled it slightly too much, but anyway. Now I'm going to use the tin as a guide. So I'm going to scrape the palette knife over the tin. get a really even surface. So what some people do now is actually put the sponge on top of here and then lift up the ring. What I find is that the ring spreads the creme patisserie upwards and you end up with marks on the top of the sponge. So I like to do it after, which means the moment of truth is now. Carefully lift up the ring. You should have beautifully neat strawberries with the creme patisserie. Perfect, perfect. Oh, I'm very happy with that. It's always that heart stopping moment. And now I'm going to go on with the top layer very gently because obviously the creme patisserie is still soft. So I am very happy with the way that turned out and it pays off being so particular with the size of the strawberries because you get such an even finish. Now before I add the last decorations I'm going to set this in the fridge for about 10 minutes just to solidify slightly because if I start pressing down on the top um, the cream might start to um, collapse a bit. So I'm going to put this in the fridge for about 10 minutes and get all the decorations ready. So that 10 minutes in the fridge has just set it slightly, so I'm going to decorate it. Some people decorate their Fraser cakes in different ways. Some people put marzipan on top. I don't like marzipan personally, so I'm going to avoid it. Um, really quick and easy way of doing so is a dusting of icing sugar. So I'm just going to go with a really light dusting over the top and it just hides that sponge. And I'm just going to decorate the top with some edible flowers and to make sure that they stick to the cake, I'm going to use some of the leftover creme patisserie and just pipe some over the top. You can obviously decorate it however you like. And um, when I actually learned this, we made a rose out of um, fondant icing. I don't, I don't enjoy doing that anymore. I prefer using a real rose like this one. Just need to place it on. And I've got a couple of strawberries as well, which I'll put into the decoration because it's obviously a strawberry cake. Mm. 
and maybe a couple more just down here. And of course, some edible glitter. It'll be rude not to. And there you go, a beautiful Fraser cake. Not too difficult to make. You just need one of those mousse rings, but it is worth it because it's a stunning cake. And if you really want to wow your friends, I recommend making one of these. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do try one out, then tag me at George's Cakes. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. And I hope you liked my new kitchen. Um, plenty more videos are on the way, so do stay tuned. And in the meantime, I will see you very soon.